Hare Krishna. Years ago, Kesha Bharati Maharaj, the sweetest Swami you could ever hope to meet. Oh my God. Kesha Bharati Maharaj. Oh my God. Wrote in a Back to Godhead article. Thanks. It's not Thank a fever, maybe. That's an excuse to bless me. Wrote in a <laughs> wrote in an article in Back to Godhead that you had come to Krishna Conscious through a series of events. I can't remember exactly what you said, but it, it was it, it was it was too coincidental. It was too coincidental. One not thing after the other, not, to be, not to be the hand of God. Yes. So this is Krishna, God in action. In, Absolutely. In the life of his devotee. Absolutely. And I've been curious ever since to hear about that. So please tell us all about well, it. Well, your story. Well, it, it's kind of like how I came to Krishna consciousness, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, and to cut to the chase, <clears throat> uh, after graduating from, graduating from UCLA in 1968, and then getting a, the first job out was assistant to the studio manager at Columbia Pictures in Hollywood. Pretty good first job, yeah. not bad. But, I, I, but during that time, between the time I was in university, I started thinking about searching, searching. A lot of people in America at that time had similar yes. thoughts. Yes. It seems especially on, in, especially on the West Coast, many people. Yes. California. And East Coast. Southern also. California and, and East Coast, New East York Coast, area. Yeah. yeah. Lower East Side. So anyway, uh, cut a long story short, I, 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 well, I found, I found the long story. The people. Maybe I don't have so much time. I found the people and just the whole culture and atmosphere there in Hollywood to be so plastic. Hmm. I couldn't, and um, I used to get because of the position I was in. I used to get invitations to premieres to movies and things like that. Mm. And when hair, you remember the hair was yeah, a, yeah, yeah, a, yeah, a, yeah. a drama theater. Oh, they made it into a movie also. Yeah, but th th there was a chorus of the Mahamantra. Yeah. I had never, at this point, I didn't know anything about Krishna consciousness. I didn't know anything about mantras very much, maybe a little bit. But, uh, you know, I had read... You weren't into Eastern stuff? No, I, I, I read... You know, uh, autobiography of a yogi and be here now and those just the same books. Anyway, I, I started accumulating a little library, small mm. library, you know, of books on the subject, and it, it gra gradually was growing. So I left that job, and I went north to San Francisco, which I was a Northern California boy, and started a, a band as a musician. <laughs> And I found out very soon that it was just as plastic as Hollywood. They, were, they looked different, and they were twir twirling flowers and everything, but they were just as materialistic and plastic as the people in Hollywood. Then I Really? Thought, but because that was supposed to be authentic. Yeah. The hippie movement. Yeah, but but, but it, maybe, maybe the stars, the rock stars. Were, anyway, oh. anyway. Mm. I, I don't know how far to go into mm. detail, but anyway, I had a realization. I stopped eating meat, and I was. Then I then I then I left. Can you tell us about the realization? I mean, what happened? How did it happen? I'm, I'm about it? to tell you. Okay. All right. Uh, I went to a concert, and because I was in the music s field, I knew someone who was setting up mm -hmm. and uh, it was ultimate you know there was oh that 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 one with the rolling stones yeah, that yeah. that one yeah the, there was there was woodstock in the east coast and there was ultimate in the west coast right so i went to that and uh i got kind of like a front row seat you know and there were five hundred thousand people there and the devotees were there also but i didn't even see them they were completely on their side of 
Anyway, I had an experience. I saw the people in the crowd turn into animals. And I thought to myself, and oh, and then the MC, it was an English bloke, and he made this comment, could any pro Hell's, Hell's Angels prospects please come to the back of the stage? Now that's what I heard. I don't know if exactly it was. But I, I said, Hell's Angels, back of the stage. I looked out and I saw everyone looked like an animal. And I said, no, I'm not going to stay here. So then I climbed my way out. And as I did, I kind of went towards the back of the stage because I was close to the stage. And I saw the Hell's Angels were there. And I thought, yeah, this is bad. Something bad's going to happen. So then I hitchhiked home. And when I got home, I was living with an old childhood friend of mine. Did you, you weren't there when the guy got stabbed on stage? No, no, listen, listen, uh, okay, listen, okay. listen. So then I came into the place where I was staying and Clint, my old friend, was there. I said, Clint, Something very bad is going to happen in Altamont. And he said, anyway, take rest, you know, cool down, you know. So the next morning he came with his face white and he had a, the, the headlines of the paper, you know, people killed in Altamont. Altamont. And they had a diagram where him, I was right there. That's right where I was. Turns out that they hired the Hells Angels to be the be the security guys. Security, security. Move, huh? Yeah. So anyway, that was like a kind of like a turning point in my life, and I went. Then I left with my friend, the same friend. We traveled to in to uh, to um, to Europe. Actually, we came here actually, and then to the mainland, and then we ended up going back. I was I was on my way across land to try to find a guru because I had read these books and I was interested. And I was praying, and I had read this Be Here Now book, and I saw on the back page of the back, they had a, what did they call it? A recipe book. You know, these different, this kind of yoga, that kind of yoga, this kind of, and there was one for bhakti yoga, and mm -hmm. it was about chanting mantras. So, and, and there was one mantra. you were on the way to India, were you? I, I, w I wanted to go to India, but mm. my friend, he couldn't, he didn't feel comfortable outside of America. I blossomed hmm. outside of America. But anyway, how do I make this a long, short story? Because it's a long story. Anyway, in, this, in, the, in, the, in the recipe section at the end of Be Here Now, there was a mantra. And guess what the mantra was? Rama. Uh -huh. Just Rama. Just Rama. And then I thought, now I can do that. I can handle that. Hmm. So I, I traveled from you know, California to New York to here, over to Holland, to France, and back, chanting Marama the whole time. Hmm. And when we got back, I was married at the time, and she ended up being a saint. Her you, name was you, Colini Davy Dasi. You really, uh, you're really shortening it up. Obviously, there could be a lot more. Yeah. Colini? And Colini. She was a saint. People named their children after her. Colini? That was a long time. Anyway, let, let's let's stick to the stick to the program. So, when we when, came when back, did you, when did you marry? This is nineteen. I mean, after after you came back from Europe. I think just before, or maybe it was after. Just after. After you came back. Just from after. Europe. We and then we moved together, the three of us, my wife and Colini and. Well, which her name was Lynn at the time, and Clint and myself, we, li we moved into a mountaintop community. A hundred people in the town. And most of the houses were used by transient construction workers who were doing big dam projects and things like that. They could run those big machines. That's, his father did that. So we knew about this place. So we, we went where, there. Where? This was, it was called Fraser Park, and it was in between Los Angeles and the valley, San Joaquin and uh -huh. Sacramento Valley in so Northern you had, California. So you had seekers and heavy-duty workers in the same small place. Seekers? Seekers, like you were 
searching for God. Or... Oh, yes, that this is interesting. And you so, were, so, were, so I, I, so I got a you, part. You were there I got a part. The... I got a part-time job. Oh. I got a part-time job, in graveyard shift at night, mm. right? And anyway, I was living there, and I was playing melodies in my, with my trumpet in the, into the, making chords and doing kind of music out there in the middle of nowhere, that mm. kind of thing, and and reading these books, studying these books. So my wife wanted to go to Mexico with her friend because I went to England, to Europe with my friend. So I said, okay, fine, okay. So during that time, uh, my landlady, whose name was Hope, I'm telling the truth, this is the truth. Hmm. So help me, Krishna. Uh, Hope was a 70-year-old Christian mystic hmm. who was living there for the same reason I was actually, looking. And only she had found Jesus. She mm. was serious, very serious Christian. Not a, not a crazy morning in that yells out on the streets, and she was very serious. Can I, can I make a major backtrack? You, you're from a Jewish background. No. Oh, I thought you were. No. Oh, okay, never mind. No. What, what was any religious background at all? Uh, my mother thought I was going to be a minister. Hmm. She told me later on when I went to see her and take care of her before she passed away. Hmm. But uh, that's neither here nor there. It was Methodist, mm -hmm. Protestant. So where were, this is the way it's going to be. He's going to interrupt me every time because I'm 76 years old. I can't remember five minutes ago. I hope I can keep the train of thought. Everybody forgive me if I can't. Okay. Hare Krishna. So, so, so then, um, she you know, went down off the mountain to get her provisions because this is only 100 people in the town. You couldn't get all the things you need to live. So she went down and she was stopped by a devotee in a uh, parking lot in Bakersfield, California, which at that time was very much out of the way. Hmm. And she wasn't interested at all because she was very committed Christian. And she'd only met me twice. You know, once looking at the house and second, you know, signing the, the rent agreement. So she, somehow or other, she thought of me. Hmm. She, she said, well, maybe he'd be interested in this. She only met me twice. So she bought Ishopanishad and a Back to Godhead magazine and brought it to my door and pushed the doorbell. I happened to be at the time inside a room which didn't have any windows, just one door, it was like a cave. And they used to must, they must have used it for like, I don't know, smoking something, ham or something like that. It was a very strange room, but I used to go in there and, and try to meditate. And I was going through these books and I had a, a yoga type of thing and I was doing that. And I was reading in the book and then trying to meditate. And of course, it's one of those books that said, you're supposed to hear sounds, and you're supposed to, then you can become God in six months, that whole that stuff. So I was there, and all of a sudden I heard this ding, and I said, this is it. Hmm. You know, I'm going to be a God sooner than I thought. And then I heard it again, ding, and I said, no, that's my doorbell. <laughs> so then I had to make this momentous decision whether I was going to stay there and try to become God by listening to this, or go and answer my door. So I decided to answer my door. And I opened the door and there's Hope. And she said, I think these are for you. And I said, Hope, thank you very much. And that was it. Then I put those books and I didn't look at them. I didn't look at them because I was going systematically through these books and I, that's the way I am, mm. a very organized person. So I put the books at the end of the you know, that little shelf of books oh. I had, right? So this was at the same time my wife had gone to Mexico with her friend. And, she, you know, we weren't into, you know, border towns and, you know, beach towns and things like this. We were into cultural things. So she was in the middle of Mexico looking for some, you know, cultural places to see, historical places. Mm. She went into a used bookstore. And she found there was one book in the English language. 
And guess what it was? What the Bhagavad Gita, Gita as it is. The purple or blue. Right, right, uh, right, right. The abridged, ori original abridged, one abridged in, version. In America. Yes, abridged version. Macmillan. Hmm. So she came back and she brought me the book. I said, thank you very much, dear. And I put that book right next to the other one. I didn't look at it. I just put the book next to the other one. And two or three nights later, I went to work in my graveyard shift. And at a time just before the sun came up, it was probably, probably Brahma Muhurta, but I didn't know anything about Brahma Muhurta mm. at the time. Mm. But there was no one around. And I took these books out of the bag for the first time. Mind you, I had been praying like anything for guidance. Because I could see that there was a thread running through all these literatures, Tibetan Book of the Dead, Egyptian Book of the Dead, Buddha Sutras, Koran, Torah, you know, uh, Dark Night of the Soul, you know, St. Francis of Assisi, all these things. The, the imitation of Christ? Whatever, but th there was a thread running through it all. Mm. And I was waiting for something or someone to tie it together mm. so I could understand. You know, and um, so anyway, there I am, pulled, pulled at work, pulled these two books out of my bag, and guess what? They were the same author. Mm -hmm. The same author. And as soon as I saw that, tears came pouring out of my eyes. Literally. My hairs went up. And I was in another state. Honestly from touching Prabhupada's books, from looking at Prabhupada's books. And then I just picked up the Gita, and I started, because I had another, I had a Christopher Isherwood Gita, which you couldn't make heads or tails of, of what it was saying. It was like a poetry, and mm. couldn't understand anything. But I had gone through it, mm. so I was kind of like leafing through this book. Every one of my questions, was answered within 30 seconds each time I went to another page. And I came to the ninth chapter. Now this is the unabridged version, but in the abridged version, which didn't have all of the uh, purports, mm. the purports were cut, Prabhupada wasn't happy about that. And I came to the end of the ninth chapter, second verse, and I read this. After I was already mm. so impressed, it was amazing. Uh, Thus, the process of devotional service of Krishna consciousness is the king of all education and the king of all confidential knowledge. It is the purest form of religion and it can be executed joyfully without difficulty Therefore, one, one should, should adopt, adopt it. it. And I closed the book. That was it. I was a devotee. Prabhupada. I'm telling you the truth. I was a devotee. And I went up, after I got off work, I went up to our place, and I got Clint out of bed. And I said, Clint, something just happened that is not normal. And we used to talk about spiritual things, what we thought were spiritual mm. things, a lot. And I said, but this was too much. There's no, it's not possible that this could have happened. You know, the coincidence was just too much. And of course, later on, I found out there was a super soul in everybody, and he was directing everything. And it just made complete sense. It just, everything fell in place. I never looked back. So I said, we've got to find more out about this. So we got the, the Back to God in magazine out, looking for an address, right? So the cover of the magazine had Prabhupada sitting with a bunch of devotees in front of the L.A. Temple. And it was billed, the L.A. Temple was billed as the world headquarters. Mm. So naturally, you want to find out about something. We were only 70 miles from there. Mm. Let's go to the world headquarters. But we didn't like it, L.A. Oh, you didn't like L.A. as a city? No. Or you didn't yeah, like the L.A.? City. I mean, I spent more than four years there working mm. and going to university, and I was up to here with the whole L.A. scene. Mm. But, but we liked San Francisco, because we were Northern California boys. So... We, we found an address, Frederick Street, in hmm. San Francisco. So we, we drove out of our way more than 300 miles 
we didn't have very much money. We were poor. Mm. And we, we, so I, we got there, and it was a boarded up oh. storefront. This was 1972. And uh, October, to be exact. And I was, it was a dead end. I was completely disappointed. What to do? I went all this way. And I looked down, the, I looked up the street, and I realized I was actually living four doors up from that, from where the temple was. When? This was in 1970. You had been living? Yes. And the devotees had come and gone in the meantime? They, they went. I, I, I was so absorbed in music at that time, I didn't know what was going on. You but, didn't even notice but, the devotees were I, but, there. But I, remember, but I remembered, after you know, my memory was jogged a little bit, I remember seeing this big cart being built. I, I remembered something, you know. But not very much. Isn't that amazing? That no, this is the listen. This, this is just the beginning. <laughs> this is just the beginning. So then, I look down the street. This is Stanyan Street, and down when you look down the street, you come to the Haight Haight Ashbury, and I saw a devotee distributing magazines and incense. So I went running up to him. Mind you, I had a beard down to here and hair down to here. You had. Yeah. yeah. I was like I looked like a mountain man, which I was. And I came running up to him, I said, Hare Krishna, because I had read Hare Krishna in the book. You know? Hmm. Nobody come running up to him and say Hare Krishna out of the blue in 1972. Anyway, so he said, oh, and I was carrying that Gita in my hand, ah. and I wanted more answers. And he said, oh, you must have come to hear Srila Prabhupada speak tonight. And I said, what do you mean? Because on the cover of the old AC old, Bhaktivedanta Swami. And also in the ISKCON uh, first version of the Upanishad, also the word Prabhupada wasn't there. I'd never heard the word Prabhupada before. So I said, What do you mean? He said, Oh, the author of that book that you're holding, he just arrived today. Arrived on the same day as Prabhupada. And the same thing happened. Tears just poured out of my eyes. They had to pour me into the car, and they took me to the temple. And I walked into the temple, and I just... And it, it, was, as, it was as if I had never not been there. That was it. And then, you know, they were running around because it turns out that Prabhupada was on his way to India because this was at the time when the Bombay thing was happening. I didn't know anything about this. I'm just remembering back then. And uh, so then uh, the flight, somehow or other, was supposed to go to L.A., to Manila, to Bombay, and it got rerouted to San Francisco. So he came, <laughs> he came without much notice. And so they didn't really make much preparation, but they made a program in the, in, the, in the Hall of Flowers in Golden Gate Park. So they were all running around, and I was like, where were you in this? Where were you? And, and everybody was so familiar to me. And then they put me into a van, and New they took me... New but familiar. The, Is that everyone right? looked familiar to me, hmm. but I, and I was asking them if they were there during this, and they were there at this concert or this place. Uh -huh. or this place. So then they put us in a van and they took us to the program. Mm. And I'm sitting there with my friend Clint, and he's so uncomfortable. He was, he was like squirming, can we go now? You know? But I was like completely absorbed. And sitting there, and then all of a sudden, somebody, and it turned out to be Jainanda, went like this and from the back <laughs> and put <sighs> tilak on my forehead. <laughs> and, and then, I saw it, there was a stage, you know, it was like a place for a program, and I, I saw the lights dim, and then there was a light, and I thought that there were the program was like Prabhupada came out on the stage, and he lit the whole room up. This is what I saw physically. Hmm. I saw the whole room lit up, and I fell on my face. And you knew nothing about offering nothing, a basis. Nothing. I didn't know anything. <laughs> I just fell on my face, and tears were flowing. Clint's, what's going on here, you know? 
He was a Mayavadi. Mm -hmm. I found out later because we talked about so many things. It was all Mayavadi type of things, you know. One time I was with him in San Francisco, high on something or other, and we were watching the sunset. And he was meditating, you know. And then he looked up and the sun came up and he said, See? I was meditating on the sun coming and it came up. <laughs> and I said, Clint, you're nuts. You're out of your mind, you know. That's who he was, who he was complete my body. So then Prabhupada came out and my whole life changed. It had already changed. But then I, I this is my spiritual master. And uh, I mean, there were a few, a little time I went back to where we were living and I told my wife at the time, uh, I don't know about, but I ha I've been called. I'm being called. I've got to go. If you want to come, please. But I'm, she said, I'm coming, I'm coming. So she came also. So anyway, one little detail. So Prabhupada decided he wanted to leave early. There weren't that many people there, by the way, because they didn't have time to... to uh, at the program, you mean? At the program. Mm. There weren't that many people because they didn't, they didn't have time to advertise. So just, Prabhupada decided he wanted to leave early. Now, this was told to me by Bhumna, our godbrother, mm. many years after. Mm. I, was in so, I was intoxicated, not with drugs or anything like that. I was just so intoxicated with Prabhupada's presence and what, had been, what was happening to me, you know, that I, I couldn't remember anything. But he told me the details. I remember this much. He was there. He was there. He was assisting Jainada in the kitchen. Mm. There was a stage, there was a kitchen, and there was a hallway, which we couldn't see because there was a wall, a wall between us and the hallway. And then over here, there was doors leading out to the parking lot. So on the way by the kitchen, uh, the secretary of Prabhupada called out to Jayananda, who was cooking. Prabhupada decided to leave early. Prabhupada, Jayananda said, can't leave early. We don't have prasadam yet. Because we was, that's how they made prasadam. They offered Prabhupada what they were going to give to the guests and he would take. So then, then, then Jayananda made a plate, a really quick plate, gave it to Bhumna. And he said, you have to offer this to Prabhupada, otherwise we won't have prasadam. So he went running down the hallway. By this time, I was, I got to the door, go off, off to the parking lot. I opened the door, and there was Prabhupada going to the car. And Bhumna Main came beside me, running to the car. And Prabhupada, by that time, had gotten into the car. And he looked at me. Mm. And I looked at him. And time stopped. Time stood still. And I wanted to jump into the car. Hmm. But I couldn't. I couldn't move. So then he went to the Prabhupada. He, he put through the window, this is, you know, cultured Vaishnavas. He put the Prashadam through the window underneath Prabhupada's nose. Jainanda told me to offer you this. Prabhupada said, Jainanda? And then he took from the plate. I think he took, I don't know how many times, he took from the plate. Then he took the, gave it back. And then the gar left. So there I am, standing there. And there's Bhumna, who I found out later on was a Mahaprasadam freak. I mean, he would steal it wherever it was, wherever we f f hit it, he would find it, steal it. He, there he was with a plate of Maha Mahaprasadam from Prabhupada. He turned around, and there I was, standing right in front of him. And he told me this many, many years later. He said, you look like a light bulb. Hmm. You were glowing. And he looked at the, the plate, he looked at me, he looked at the plate, he looked at me again, he said, oh, all right, and he gave me that plate. And I sat down in the parking lot and ate that whole plate of Maha Mahaprachadam Prabhupada. That's how I came to Krishna consciousness. And of course, I, I went back and we came up and then, because I was a householder, I didn't move into the temple, but I joined and the rest is history. So it wasn't possible for that to happen unless Krishna was directing that show. It wasn't possible. Mm -hmm. There was no other explanation. You did it all in 25 minutes. 
could could be expanded into a big book, probably. You know, I, I, I wrote something in an offering to Prabhupada many, many years ago where I wrote down the basics of it. But uh, Hare Krishna, that's history. It's gone. And there's been a lot of history since then. Yeah, a lot of history since then. Hare Krishna. Hare Bo. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for asking, and uh, I hope I didn't confuse anybody by my scatterbrained uh, explanations. <laughs> Hi Krishna. Hi Krishna.